So in this section, I want to talk a little bit about how the U.S. Equal Opportunity Commission, um, U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, the EEOC, sorry, <laughs> how they define sexual harassment, all right? So the EEOC defines harassment to include the submission or unwelcome sexual conduct of any kind, whether it's verbal or physical, or requests for sexual favors and other conducts of a sexual nature that is made explicitly or implied a term of the condition of employment. Very long sentence. You cannot make a sexual advance as a condition to hire somebody or someone is offering you that, I guess, all right? So, hey, you go on a date with me, I'll, you got the job. That would be sexual harassment. If the conduct that is used as the basis of employing that person, if that decision, whether they say yes or no, is the basis, then that is gonna be defined as sexual harassment. Or if it interferes with their job performance, it could create that hostile work environment that we talked about it. So it's one of two things. Either it's a condition of being employed or it could be a condition of maintaining employment. Either one of those. And it doesn't necessarily have to be sexual in nature. It could just be of offensive remarks about that person's sex. So I've given an example here, and this comes from several law dictionaries, so these are not my examples. <clears throat> it is illegal to harass a woman by making offensive comments about women in general. So if you were to say, hey, we all know women uh, half the intelligence or something of that nature, oh, I had to explain it to her, you because women are dumber than men, that could be construed still as sexual harassment. Even though it wasn't sexual in nature, it was based upon that gender, all right? Now, the good thing is it's not limited, sexual harassment is not limited to across the gender gap. And what I mean by that is sexual harassment can come from a woman to another woman, all right? It doesn't necessarily have to be from a boss to a woman, or from a man to a woman. It could be between same genders, a man to a man or a woman to a woman. It is still looked at and treated exactly the same as sexual harassment, even though it's still same sex people. Now here's the paragraph I was talking about that they use this term simple teasing or offhanded comments or isolated incidents that may not be very in, uh, serious. Harassment is illegal when it's so frequent and severe that it creates a hostile work environment that result in that employee not being able to perform correctly or functionally, or you make it a condition of their employment, which would also include raises or demotions all right so if you somebody hey uh you know you go on a date with me and you've got the new you i'll give you the manager's job and if you don't you're going to be moved to third shift that would definitely be construed as sexual harassment now here's something else you guys need to keep in mind and there are a lot of people that have that mentality about i don't want to get involved well, technically, you can be involved. It doesn't matter who makes the offense. If it's a manager, a coworker, an employee, a contractor, a vendor, or in our case, it could actually be a client. I know that personally, several women agents that have told me over the years that they've had clients make advances to them or comments to them or have been in vacant homes showing them before and clients have actually done this so it could be the same but here's the key 
the victim of the harassment doesn't necessarily just involve the target person. It could be anybody else that is affected by it. So if the manager is saying something to Susie and you're within earshot, you could in essence have a sexual harassment case because it's bothering you, even though the comment was to her, okay? So what is considered sexual harassment and what is not? I will tell you here, or we're going to go through some examples, but I'm also going to tell you that it can be a gray area, and I would suggest that if it's ever questionable, you need to talk to somebody. So sharing sexually inappropriate images, such as pornography or salacious gifts, that, or is that pronounced GIF? I don't know. I think it's GIF. <laughs> Sending uh, suggestive emails. Displaying inappropriate sexual images or posters in the workplace. Now, it's funny, ironically to me, and this is how times have changed, and I'm not saying the mindset should be changed, should have been this mindset all the time, but I know my father, who used to have calendars in his garage that were put out by car companies that had naked women as models for their tools. Don't laugh, man. Used to be a standard practice. I'm not going to mention the company, but it's very common. The calendars had naked model women, naked models, demonstrating their, you know, their two power drive or their impact wrench. Um, so that is not right, dude. All right. Don't make lewd jokes or sexual anecdotes. Uh, making uh, inappropriate gestures. So even sexual harassment doesn't necessarily need to be verbal. It could be sexual gestures. Uh, I love this one. Staring in a sexually suggestive or offensive manner. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I got a bad lazy eye and it looks like I'm winking. <laughs> don't make jokes. I'm sorry. Uh, Making sexual comment about their appearance, their clothing, their body parts, you know, things of that nature. Obviously, inappropriate touching, including patting, rubbing, pinching, squeezing, any of those things that could be construed as a sexual activity. Asking about a person's sexual history or their orientation could potentially be sexual harassment. Making offensive comments about their orientation or gender identity. That is one that's probably very common currently, and I would say especially in the Midwest area Bible Belt for you listening in the Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky region. I don't think that we are as advanced in this area as maybe some of the more metropolitan cities of Los Angeles, San Francisco, Miami, New York, things like that. So what is not, and this is the one where everybody wants to take notes, what is not considered sexual harassment? Now, it doesn't say, it says all types of sexual relationships are not legally prohibited. So we have discussed what it is, so let's talk about what is not. Typically, the EEOC says there are things that are called singular activities or trivial behavior. For instance, a sexual joke or an offhanded comment on its own may not be considered illegal conduct. The difference is when it starts to become repeated or directed to a person specifically, that is a condition of their employment or a job placement. So singular or trivial behavior. For example, that's a nice outfit. That in and of itself is not construed as sexual harassment. You should dress more professionally. That is not considered sexual harassment. 
Now, what if you said, wow, that skirt really shows off your nice butt. Now that you're starting to get in that gray area and potentially cross a line. Or if you said, you know, if you wore your shirt a little tighter, you might do more to impress your clients. Those could be crossing the line of potential sexual harassment. Now, the problem that we have, and we have this a lot in our profession, are married couples where there is what the EEOC calls a consensual behavior. A consensual behavior is where it's mutually agreed upon by both parties and they are both willing participants in a relationship. Although they are not legally required, there are a lot of companies out there that actually have policies in place that either prohibit this kind of activity or make them sign a document saying, I am in a uh, mutual relationship with this person, which that document then can get rescinded at any time. If that consensual relationship terminates, those two people now are back to being subjected, and that's probably not a good word, they are back to being liable for sexual harassment activities. So if they were dating and let's say they were kissing in the uh, parking lot and that's consensual, that's fine. If they break up, they walk in the parking lot and the one says, well, give me a kiss goodbye, that could be construed as sexual harassment, all right? It is also repeated requests by an individual after that person or the, the target has indicated they are not interested. Once again, repeated. I will go back to that single activity. If you ask someone out on a date and they say, no, I would not ever do that with you, that in and of itself is not construed as sexual harassment. If you continue to ask them, or you elevated your request, well, I guess a BJ in the parking lot's out of the question, then, yeah, you're going to be in trouble, all right? That was not directed at anybody in the audience, by the way. Um, while it's considered sexual harassment in the relationship is consensual, I left the word not out. While it's not considered harassment, while they're in a consensual relationship, if that relationship terminates, then it could be construed as sexual harassment, all right? So make sure that if you have this going on, if you're a managing broker or you're even a team that has a team of people, it is very common to see husband and wife teams, all right? So there is a lot of consensual relationship, it seems like, in our business. You might want to think about is that something we need for them to say, yes, I'm in a relationship with Bob or Susie or Bob and Susie? And if so, then yes, it is consensual. If it's not, it can then become sexual harassment. And remember, it's either quid pro quo or could create a sexual or a hostile work environment. So... Think about that if you are running a brokerage out there or if you are running a team potentially or you have some business on the side that you're doing and you've got people that are dating, which isn't uncommon. I mean, hey, they spend a lot of time together at work and all of a sudden they start dating. That could be consensual. That's cool. Maybe. Maybe you have a policy against it. If you don't, you probably ought to have something that says, hey, Yes, here's a document saying we are, and I want to rescind that now because now we're not. All right? Let's keep going.